Jackson gave me the news of a planet far away. And Colonel O'Neill will assemble a team that will try to save the day. Dr. Sam has a master plan and a science attitude. And the job of Jill is part of the deal with his trusty go It's just a regular day at Stargate Command and it might be hard to understand. Welcome back, everyone, to Woo. one of the most anticipated episodes of all time. I'm your co-fry, Sarah. I'm your co-fry, Christina. And I'm your co-fry, Rebecca. Yeah. It's, we've... it's the namesake episode. It's, it's, yeah. If you haven't caught on by now, I know Perez on TikTok, it took him, <laughs> a, like, how many years to, to figure out, like, oh, that's what it was? Yeah, because he was I like, guess he you're, thought you're three really... short fries. Yeah, I thought I maybe he just thought we really liked we re we really like potatoes. <laughs> I mean, what do we do? We do love potatoes. Yeah, we like potatoes. I know. So, but this is our real music. quick, real quick, we have a little bit of a fry box. It's been less than a week since we recorded last time. So, yeah, Not I'm still gonna press the fry box button though. Take Ooh, it away. Yeah, do it. Yeah. because we're three fry shots. So, our resident tech expert Rebecca should take this one away. I feel, I feel like, yeah. I feel like I'm usually the owner of the fry box, which is yeah. fine. I'm totally happy to be to be here. But um, yeah, the fry box is that you can go and watch the last fry box that we did uh, as a standalone fry box thing that we have started doing on our channel. So from mm -hmm. this point on, when we do fry box news, I will cut out the fry box news, and you can watch just that news if you want to. The reverse of that is that from this point on as well, all of our episodes will have chapter markers. So that mm -hmm. if you want to skip the fry box news, because maybe mm -hmm. it's a year from now and that news is very, very not relevant anymore, oh, that's then a you, good can, point. <laughs> you can skip the fry box news <laughs> and just get straight into the commentary. So that 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 is the update. The update is that the fry box is updated at this point. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's I, a good update. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. I making it, it easier. Yeah, I looked at it from the lens of like someone who's new to watching us and they're like, I literally do not give a fuck about these three people at all. And I just want to hear about Stargate. So like other by the Trek that. troll, aren't you? <laughs> no, no. It's honestly how I listen to podcasts. Like if I pick up a podcast and it's like two people, they're going to be like, whatever, reading Reddit stories, because that's been my thing for a while. <laughs> and they're talking about their personal lives. I'm like, I don't care. Get to the get to what you were supposed to be talking about. Like, I love uh, that so much because it, when we pockets, we always talk about our personal life. But yes, it, I hear it, you. Anno well, yeah. And like, listen, if it's good enough, then I'll backtrack and learn the lore behind it all. But that's for, totally for introducing myself to it and getting a vibe for what it's about. Like, absolutely. If it's going to be 40 minutes of them, like blathering away <laughs> about stuff that I don't know about. And then 10 minutes of what the title said it was well, supposed to be. I'm I like, mean, mm, maybe not. Heaven forbid we go for three minutes of just totally <laughs> undigestible content and I, people have I mean, three minutes was all that guy could take. So I'm gonna break <laughs> the wait, I'm gonna break the wait for the comments rule and I'm gonna throw uh Ellie up here. Oh um, but I care about you. Yes, thank you, Ellie. We appreciate it. We're not gonna stop the fry box and oh, we're yeah. still gonna talk about ourselves plenty, but now you'll just have a skip ahead button if you need it. So yes. That's the difference right there. So this is more for the people who don't give a shit about us at all. And we're okay that you don't give a shit about us. You don't have to. Truly is fine. Us. I mean, we're pretty yes. awesome, so that's your loss, but whatever. It's, the fair, but we all we all love the Stargate. So if you just want to be here for that. Wait, that's too cocky sounding. That's what that Trek guy also said. We sounded like we were the cool kids in middle school or something. Oh, sixth grade. Yeah, specifically, I think 
not like little <laughs> kids from sixth grade. So sorry, what trauma happened? To Dude, you, he doesn't know us for at real. All. <laughs> I was like he was uh, bullied by some girls in sixth grade. Maybe recently. Middle schoolers are mean as fuck. So like I'm terrified. Middle school girls probably could have said some mean shit to him. And it, we I just mean, that. maybe I don't he's know. a teacher. I don't know. Anyway, yes, we we try not to be mean, but if that's how you become a press, oh well. <laughs> there we go. Oh well. Did it that's in we are who we are. <laughs> oh well. Oh, the fry boxes. Now you can skip the fry box if you're so inclined. <laughs> Solid. People, I can foresee it now. They will be using that feature on this episode very heavily because this episode is the star of the show. This oh, is yes. it is the star. the star of the whole podcast, basically. The whole series, it's arguably. Been almost exactly three years since we started this podcast, and we finally got to the namesake episode. It's yeah. so, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for and, those who oh, go ahead. Oh, I did want to say we do have some little treats in here for you guys because, again, the whole pulling the clips worked out pretty good last week. So, again, we pulled some little clips that we can yeah. watch together because, again, some things, whether it's like, again, not to rag on our acting skills, you, they don't translate yeah. well when we just read them or sometimes it's not anything we can read. It's like you have to watch it and experience it. Yeah, so. Totally. We you can imagine what part of this episode would be impossible for us to read. I'm sure all of you yeah. can imagine exactly yeah. what yeah, part of this episode yeah. that is. I would yeah. have included more, but I don't think that'd be practical because then it just turns into a watch party. Yeah. And we're not a watch party. No. I mean, we can't be, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. No, no, no. I it's okay. Oh, no. I feel like maybe for those who don't know or like aren't if, if you can't do the time math on it, it's also important because we started this podcast in the middle of lockdown and like pandemic time. So this whole like also window of opportunity, this Groundhog Day repetitive was really relevant to us during that time as well. So just kind of some more side clip notes to like the frame of mind we were all in when we decided to get into this space. So mm -hmm. for me in particular, I felt like this was a nice, this podcast was a nice break from the mundane of the same thing every day so it's important to me and i love that we have this episode to talk about many yeah, years okay. things but yeah remember where we started things have changed so much like yeah. for me personally i know i can say it's been as rod stewart would say it's been a long road getting from there to here okay it's <laughs> a star trek crossover but yeah it's been i, I, I don't i mean i haven't had any changes no <clears throat> Mm, none. Sounds fake. Sounds <laughs> fake. Mm -mm. None of us. Yeah, none of us has. It's just like, no, no changes. Not 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 a single one. No. All right. No. Are we ready to get into this let's, episode? Let's do it. Let's get into it. Yeah. All right. So let's just start. Obviously, overall thoughts. This is clearly like a huge fan favorite for obvious reasons. It's one of the funniest episodes and you know we'll get into that but especially like time travel and like time loop groundhog day episodes are often like one of the most favorite episodes mm -hmm. of a series or a show mm -hmm. and i want to maybe ponder on that why and like pose that question now and then maybe pick up on that when we get to the end yeah um because i can think of a couple different reasons as to why it would resonate and the way that I look at this is like this episode has been talked to death. Like at this point, we're just beating a dead horse. Anything that we say probably has already been said by somebody this is the else. The second live stream that I've produced of this episode, technically. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there's probably nothing that we can say that would shed some new light on it. Maybe I'm going to try at the end. Perhaps I have some thoughts, but it's just a super fun. But then it towards the end, it gets really serious and kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that. It, yeah. you know, brings it back down to earth. I think my overall thoughts is I appreciate and I'm very thankful for that um, audio um, that the companion did that read through. Thank you, Sarah, for sending the link and Rebecca for sending that kind of grouping of um I was not at articles. home. I was like, well, here's the whole show. I don't know what to do. I don't know but which if, one it is. If you all have not listened to the article, like audio articles, I'm not going to say it right, but it really was great to listen to on my walk today. Um, the analysis and the talk through of, of Jack and Lost. But I, for this episode, really like that 
as comedic as it is, to your point, Sarah, it does get real serious at the end. But what you realize is this kind of, I don't want to say a trope of humor to handle grief, but in a lot of ways, this is what this episode is about, is they, it's a heavy grief that caused what's going on and using comedy or comedic moments. I find it interesting um, from a production or execution standpoint that that's how this episode was put together to show um, show grief because it didn't feel heavy. It felt lighthearted, but then you, re yeah, anyway, that's more on that later. But for me, that's kind of as we go through this talking, having that lens of comedy to help grief. Um, yeah, for sure. And it was not, it was not originally going to be comedic at all. Right. Like the original way it was written was super, super serious and dark, mm -hmm. like really Whoa. dark. Mm -hmm. So, um, which I think would have not, it wouldn't have been the same message by the end. I think if you had done it that way. No, it wouldn't have. That's one of the reasons why I can't rewatch Groundhog's Day too often because of the really dark parts in the middle mm -hmm. there. The part that gets me the most is the old guy that keeps dying and like he mm -hmm. tries to like take him out to dinner and get him a more oh my god no what break, he does rip my heart out mm -hmm. break it stomp on it like it's so mm -hmm. sad even like there's other stuff in there you know where he tr tries to take his own life that like that's just really could be considered as like really dark comedy of like mm -hmm. but i don't know that that old man in there in the middle really got me i can't that's no thank you pass mm -mm. so hard pass yeah um and i think with time loop episodes and i think something that can be detrimental if it's not done right is the repetitive nature of it where it's like this is boring oh my god we've done this like which it's only like how imagine how they feel imagine how jack and teal felt mm -hmm. we saw a fraction of what they did and like imagine every day holy shit and it's not even a full day it's like 10 hours um it would be pretty, mm. pretty difficult. So I think they did a really good job of not making it feel too repetitive, keeping mm -hmm. it fun, but then kind of bringing it back and making it a very human story at the end. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you ready to get into it? Let's do our walk Let's through. Let's do it. Let's cool. Do it. So our episode opens up on a planet called P4X 639. It's deserty. And it's got some ruins mm -hmm. that Daniel is studying along with another man named Malachi. And the son of this planet is also doing some fancy shit that Sam is studying. So like they're pretty busy. And they got all that. They all got the cool sunglasses. I know. I yeah, really I got want them, those. But they're yeah. stupid expensive. If you want like the if you want the real ones. ones. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get knockoff ones. I'm still going to try and find the we'll make Amazon own. version. As John would say, Daddy Bezos. Can you find <laughs> I it for know. Me? <laughs> I do love. Uh -huh. I do love when listening to those with Daddy Bezos. Yeah, as a ring. So, Daniel finds some ruins uh, in a language that's similar to Latin, and he starts asking Malachi about it. But Malachi is getting squirrely. He's like, "Don't you have to leave soon? Like, aren't isn't it time? Like, the storm's gonna come." And he checks on one of his devices and tells Daniel that this storm is approaching and radiation could get too dangerous. But Daniel's like, it's fine. Sam will tell us. Like, I'm good. There's so a lot Dan of faith in, in Sam, by the way. Like, truly. Which, right. Which is good. But I would, I would put all my her. faith in Sam. No, yeah. I mean that in a compliment way. Like, that's a lot of faith in someone. But yeah. 100%, yeah. I, I mean that positively. So Daniel translates a bit of this language to conqueror of time uh, or a more accurate translation would be master of the uncertain past. The geomagnetic storm reaches its peak. Malachi says he has to act now, and he aims a small weapon at Daniel, who is very confused, and he shoots him. Uh, Malachi begins pushing stones on the altar and activating it. Sam has finished up, and they're ready to go, but when they call out for Daniel, he does not answer. Jack and Teal see Malachi at the altar, pressing all these buttons and shit, mm -hmm. and... <laughs> it's starting to generate this electricity it activates the gate and then we see back on earth the earth gate activates and it's engulfed in electricity and hammond is shook he's like <laughs> what's going on so back on p4x 639 jack and teal try to stop malachi by pulling him away from the altar and the three men are engulfed in a bright light as the machine fully activates cut to the commissary after this bright flash of light 
Uh, Jack is confused. He's Daniel is mid sentence talking to Jack and he says, anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think? And he's very like impassioned. He's like, what do you think? <laughs> and Jack is so confused. Why is he here? And what just happened? And then we have our opening credits. Okay. Yes. Something just dawned on me. What? <laughs> I'm so excited. What? Because it's a loop back. So Jack it would have at some point had that conversation and had mm -hmm. to have answered it. But I love how he has no memory of that conversation or ability to answer it. He wasn't paying attention ever. Exactly. Cause he never <laughs> in the does. First place, but that, yes. So that's what I find so funny. I don't know. That just clicked with me. I'm like, you've had this conversation, but I love that you just were absolutely never paying attention to him. So anyway, mm -hmm. yes, we can continue yes. with it. But what's really funny is someone he does pay attention to is mm -hmm. Sam. Because he mm. remembers shit that she says. Although it is part of their job to remember that part of the stuff that she was talking. But I'll get to that later. Anyway. Yes. Later, later. Jack is confused. We're still back in the commissary. And he's like, weren't we just somewhere else? And Daniel and Sam are confused. They're like, we've been here for 30 minutes. I don't know what you're talking about. Daniel asks if he's okay. Or are you just trying to avoid answering my question? And Sam looks at her watch and notices they got to go to the briefing. There's a briefing starting. So there's some dialogue between Carter, O'Neill, Hammond, and Daniel. So I'll do the O'Neill. There's Carter. Tilk in there too. Oh, yeah. I'll do O'Neill and Tilk. I'll do Carter. All right. I guess I'll do Daniel Hammy. Yeah, I think Hammy's just one line. So Okay. Cool. Take it away. Two weeks ago, SG-15 took these images of solar activity on P4X639. Analysis of the data indicates a steady increase in the intensity. Now, if I'm right, the explosions that we're witnessing here are just the precursor for an exponentially greater violent ejection. Till says, Major Carter, have we not previously been briefed on the concerning this matter? And Jack says, I was just going to say that. Sir? You want to go to this planet and set up some kind of remote observatory? Yes. We just did that. No, we didn't. And Teal'c says, I believe we did, Daniel Jackson. No, Teal'c. That's what this briefing is about. I distinctly remember sitting here listening to Carter prattle on about solar activity and corona something. Corona mass emission. I, I was just about to bring it up. There you go. How would I know that? Maybe you read my report. Maybe he read your report? <laughs> I'm telling you guys, we've done this before. And Tilk says, I'm in agreement with O'Neill. I am experiencing a great deal of familiarity with these events. This Daniel is so sassy in I this love episode. It. I love There's him. probably four four areas. This was one of them. The look that he gives, he's like, maybe he read your report. <laughs> okay, girl. Sounds fake. Yeah. Like. Yeah. So only Jack and Tilk. No, like we've done this before. What are you talking? Nobody else knows, which this would be the thing that probably drove me the most crazy if I was in this situation is having to explain this shit to people a million times over and over again. And you go through mm -hmm. the stages of them not believing you. What are you talking about? Like that would be what would drive me to the brink of insanity. I that would be it right there. So just then the gate activates unscheduled. The group heads to the control room and Jack says it's SG-12, but they aren't due back for days. And the GDO confirms that it is SG-12 and Hammond is surprised because they basically like predicted the future. Yeah. Teal'c states one of them will be injured and sure enough, one of them come limping through like their leg is injured. Cut to Hammond and Carter discussing these events. Jack and Teal'c have memories of a mission they haven't even been on yet and correctly predicted SG-12's return that was a result of an accident and they should have had no way of knowing that. Cut to the infirmary. Janet is checking Jack and Teal'c's vitals, and Daniel is asking for a rundown of what they remembered from the planet. We find out Malachi is an alien archaeologist that SG-15 met at the initial survey where they went. A beam shot out from the ruins around the altar and the stargate. There was a blinding flash of light. And then Jack says, I was back <laughs> in the commissary eating my Fruit Loops. <laughs> Actually, fun fact that I read um, probably is common knowledge at this point because of this episode. The Fruit Loops, they glued them into place so they would be exactly the same every single time. So they, the colors would always be the same. 
Also, sure. the cereal company tried to be like, can you just use this cereal instead? And they were like, it's literally loops. We have to have fruit yeah. loops. <laughs> so like it was like a no, this is like a non-negotiable. We need the loops. So yes. Oh, do yeah. we know what they wanted them to use? I forget what it was. I think it was something else they were trying to promote, like oh. some other cereal or something. Oh, no. could you imagine? No, be gross. something. I don't be, know. Had to be Fruit Loops. Yep. Had to be Fruit yep. Loops. So Fraser can't find anything wrong with them, but the question remains: Why are Teal'c and Jack remembering these things, and why is it only them? Hammond decides to postpone the mission to P4X639. Cut to Jack walking down the hallway and Daniel chases him down. Jack had mentioned the altar and Daniel has some photos taken by SG-15. There might be something that then clue them in about what's going on. Unfortunately, it's the equivalent of about 400 pages of alien text. Woof. <laughs> Siler comes barreling around the corner and crashes into Daniel and papers go flying. And At that point, Jack is like, oh, should have seen that coming, but... I but, oh well he i love will, how though. i love how he just doesn't give a shit he's like yeah <laughs> yeah he deserves it so cut to the commissary jack is drinking a cup of coffee doing his whole what's in my cup thing and <laughs> sam approaches him so i have this really good cute dialogue between the two of them do you guys want to read that yeah 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 i'll take O'Neill. don't you know what i'm going to say actually by this time we were on the planet it's all different now Oh, well, I was thinking about what you said about a beam hitting the Stargate. What about it? <laughs> it's going to take something out of his cup. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> After the flash, you found yourself back here, and then you were basically reliving the moments up to the mission. Maybe you're not remembering future events. Maybe you were sent back in time. For what, six hours? Well, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen something like this. I mean, the Stargate did send us back to 1969 good year so i was wondering could this beam you mentioned be a means to access the gates subspace field in order to create some kind of the time inversion outside of subspace yeah i knew you were gonna say that i guess i was just thinking out loud I i'm going to go run a few simulations <laughs> so she leaves o'neill's has coffee and he has this little moment he's like keep me posted keep me <laughs> updated keep me in the like i don't know <laughs> it was it was really cute and like kind of i don't want to say it was calling back to the last episode but it's like i don't know it was a little something to me at least so yeah. where did we go okay so cut to hammond's office the lab results confirm fraser's assessment jack and tilk are perfectly fine and healthy and nothing wrong with them and just as they're about to be dismissed the gate activates and they head for the control room the gate is engulfed in electricity again. The gate tech and Hammond have never seen anything like it. And Jack is like, oh, but we have. And they know, mm. like, it's happening again. So a bright light flashes. Jack is back in the commissary, hearing the tail end of Daniel's question again. Anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think? And Jack is stunned. He's like, this something is definitely wrong. So cut to the briefing room. Sam begins to speak. Jack immediately interrupts her and tells them, we've done this before. And snarky Daniel says, we do this every day. <laughs> Jack is like, not briefings in general, like this specific briefing. And Tilk confirms the events are repeating themselves. But again, why are Jack and Tilk the only one who remember? And Jack mm -hmm. is getting annoyed. And he says, you're going to believe us when SG-12 walked through that gate in 54321. And he's off like by a second or two. <laughs> but SG-1 do indeed, or SG-12, come back through the gate. So cut to the infirmary. Janet is flashing the pen light in O'Neill's eye. Hammond comes in and Jack cuts him off. He's like, I know you're thinking about postponing that mission, but we probably shouldn't because it didn't work last time. And then cut to Jack walking down the corridor again. Daniel catches up with him, showing the photos of the text, uh, the variation of the ancient language that Jack spoke in the Fifth Race episode. Mm -hmm. so this is another like snarky daniel moment you guys want to read this mm -hmm. sure always i'll do o'neill well if you're if you're looking for help translating it you're barking up the wrong genius no i realize that the asgard's return to you to normal which is fortunate i suppose but uh if you could give me more details about the layout of the ruins it might be useful 
And then Siler <laughs> comes barreling around the corner again, crashing into Daniel. And then Jack, who probably could have warned him or helped him out of the way, is like, whoops. <laughs> like, no. whoops. whoops. Fortunate, I suppose. Really? You suppose? Mm. You mm -hmm. sound kind of bummed that they saved him from Sounds his like brain being scrambled. Jealous. Yeah. So Jack and Teal come to Hammond and ask, like, what the plan is. They have to do something or the day is going to happen again because it, it's happened again so far. And Hammond is finding this hard to accept, which I totally understand. Because to them, like, it would be a normal day. Yeah. Like, nothing, I don't know, what normal day for me. So <laughs> we do have this funny moment <laughs> with, um, where is it? I, my notes keep scrolling. But, like, Jack is like, listen, I understand, and, and like, I know if it was just me, but, like, look at Teal, because it's the face of a crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, like, so yeah. serious. And his eye makeup yeah. is, like, on point this episode. He's got, like, mm -hmm. the winged eye shadow, which is wild. That's good. Um. But yeah, Jack's like, if it was just me, I'd agree. But what about Teal? Come on. This is the face <laughs> of a crazy man. So they want to go back to the planet and Hammond allows it. The team head back and they run into Malachi and he's kind of surprised. But he acts like he has no idea about what they're talking about. And Malachi says he's been working mm -hmm. on translating the alien text and offers to show notes. But Jack stops him and goes through his belongings and finding a weapon. Snarky <laughs> Daniel episode Snarky scene, whatever. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> All right, let's let's go through it. I think we just assume it when it comes up. Wait, are we doing this one? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. What kind of archaeologist carries a weapon? Uh, or I do. Bad example. But I love that. it's like my favorite meme. Like I've seen that meme all over. <laughs> Tango's on fire this episode, man. It really is. I know. It's like I feel like we we finally in this episode we get to see. Um, some of Daniel that starts coming out more and more mm -hmm. as the series goes on yeah. more too, like especially post Ascension Daniel mm -hmm. versus pre Ascension Daniel. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, this is kind of the little first little taste of some of that. He's less of the like nervous nerdy, mm -hmm. and unfortunately is kind of the dick bro misogynistic in a little bit of ways right now. But like <laughs> we're working through it. But yeah. no, 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 this this is the Daniel we got right now. I would say this episode only works with it being Jack and Teal stuck in the loop. It is only this good and funny because oh, it's Oh, 100%. Them. If it was like any other combo, wouldn't work. Also, probably could have gotten solved a lot faster. <laughs> Which is why it wouldn't work. <laughs> because they'd figure it out too quickly. Oh, God. Daniel so, and Sam in it together. They, they would have had it done in two loops. They, they wouldn't even <laughs> tell anyone. They would. They just like go off for hours and hours and work for the, all the loops, and then be like, "Okay, let's present our findings." Like they wouldn't even try to go through the whole rigmarole of convincing them right. and this and no. go to Janet, get the light flashed in my <laughs> eye again. Like they wouldn't even do that. No, absolutely not. So Jack finds another object with Malachi's belongings, and he activates it, and it shows a photo of a woman smiling. It is Malachi's wife. He's like, it's mm. my wife if you must know. Like, God, fucking nosy. Get out of my shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then the altar begins to activate on its own. So we have some dialogue between Malachi and O'Neill. Sure. Go for uh, it. I'll be Malachi. Okay. It's drawing energy from the ionization in the atmosphere. There's nothing Major Carter can do. Excuse me? How do you know her name? Uh, you told me. No, I didn't. Not this time around. It doesn't matter. You're too late. How do you shut this thing off? Even if I knew, I wouldn't tell you. So it gigs up, Malachi. You broke your fucking code. Yeah. You can't lie. <laughs> they know. So he is behind this whole thing. The, him and this machine. And we don't understand his motives yet. Like, what's his end nope. game? So the machine activates and O'Neill is back in the commissary yet again. Eating his Fruit Loops. Dealing with this bullshit question <laughs> that he doesn't know. So... Cut to the briefing room then. Jack immediately tells the group they're tuck in a, stuck in a time loop. Teal and him are the only ones who remember it. Jack goes through the details, all of the machine and everything on 639 and how it works with the Stargate and the atmosphere. 
<laughs> and they're all speechless because Jack is like pulling out like big words. He's like coronal mm -hmm. mass ejection, geo storm. Like they're all speechless. They're like, okay, someone's cheese has slid off his cracker. Like this is crazy. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he says, <laughs> He, it ends with Jack saying, of course, anyway, I don't know why none of you remember this, but I do know for a fact there's no point in having old Doc Frazier examine us again. Cut to the infirmary with Janet once again shining the pen light in his eye, and he says, I ask you, what could possibly be in my eye that could explain this? <laughs> and the entire time that they're getting checked out, this is like the third time that Frazier's checking them out, Teal'c is behind Jack, and I even sent you guys when I paused it a picture of Jack and then Teal'c in the background and he's kind of out of focus but you can see the it's annoyance so radiate through because he's like he's kind of like the straight man in this at this point he's tolerating all of this Jack is the one kind of getting hyped up and like frantic and he's like why don't you believe me this is happening oh my god and Teal'c kind of just sits there and takes it but it's just it's definitely just getting annoyed. quietly with the thermometer in his mouth like with mm -hmm. his intense smoky eye. But you're so good. Like the capture you got was so perfect because you just see him just like I'll have to see if I'll see if I can post it on Instagram or something to be like good. the annoyance just radiates off of this blurry <laughs> background image mm -hmm. of Teal. Um mm -hmm. so him and then Carter are discussing this, and she was even like, When was the last time you heard Colonel O'Neill use the term subspace field and geomagnetic storm? And he actually used them correctly for the most part. <laughs> yeah, like, for the most part. The most part. Was close. Yeah. So Sam believes them, but if the time loop continues, they won't even remember having this conversation. Cut to Daniel's office. Jack and Teal can meet him in there. It's obviously safer than the hallway. And Jack is begging him. He's like, we need to translate the text on the altar. Maybe we can stop all of this. Like, this is the key. Whatever's going on on this altar with this machine, whatever. So there's mm -hmm. some dialogue between Jack and Daniel. Yep. Just because someone can recognize symbols on a keyboard doesn't mean they can run a computer. If I can translate the rest of the text, I can put the device in a proper context and figure out what it's supposed to do. We know what it does. It's a time loop machine. Think about it. Who would build a device that loops time every 10 hours? Who knows? But that's what it does. Yes, but maybe that's not what it's supposed to do. I mean, for all we know, that's just an accidental byproduct of its true function. And Daniel is on to something. He is totally right. Even, like, Jack wants to, like, figure out what it, you know, he's like, this is the key. Mm -hmm. Which he is also right. But Daniel, to his point, it's like, okay, that still might not tell us everything we need to know. And time, like, doing a time loop, like, what's the point of that? Like, that doesn't mm -hmm. seem like that should be its purpose. So, right. They're trying, they got to figure out the whole puzzle. So, Daniel gets a call. Sam has something. They head to the briefing room. She proposes that whatever's happening is basically coming through the Stargate because the gate simultaneously activates. But if they dial out, it won't happen. They try dialing out, but they're unable to dial out completely just mm. when they get the incoming wormhole. And Sam is stumped. She's like, this does not make any sense. There was nothing wrong on our end at all. And mm. the gate is engulfed with electricity again. Jack, and once again, is in the commissary, healing, hearing the tail end of Daniel's question. <laughs> He's like, this is, I'm going to, this is the worst. <laughs> so cut to Daniel's lab. Jack is telling him they need to work on the translation. And the only way for them to help Daniel is to learn and remember there was this whole he's like i gotcha i gotcha i recorded it last time and it's like <laughs> dude no oh, like that's not gonna work nice try so but you are definitely not the scientist in this to not group. have to learn something he's like can we just record it indelible ink we can write it down <laughs> no sorry mm -hmm. nothing it's, stays. You. it's all you so jack picks up a photo of the text <laughs> and asks how hard can how it be Apparently very hard because he's holding it upside down. Snarky <laughs> Daniel moment. I don't know whatever because of the way he just takes it out of his hand and turns it and like gives it back it's to him. Like... <laughs> it's just like you're an idiot. Like it's going to be very hard. Hope you're ready. <laughs> Cut to Sam and Hammond. So there's some more like this is loops later at this point. 
Mm. Uh, do you guys want to mm -hmm. read this? Sure. Mm -hmm. According to Colonel O'Neill, in a previous loop, we attempted to block the connection with P4X639, but we were unable to dial out. I think what's happened is that the Earth has become, in a sense, out of sync with the rest of the gate system, making it impossible for us to establish contact with these worlds. What about SG-12? They managed to get in. I realized that. So we ran a sequence of random dialings, and this is what we found. And she pulls up the display and shows some gate mm -hmm. locations lighting up. These were the worlds we were able to contact, including Alaris, the planet where SG-12 was doing a survey. At the center of this group is P4X639. I believe that the alien device is establishing a simultaneous connection with all of these gates, creating a kind of subspace bubble, and that everything within the bubble is cut off from the normal flow of time. What are the implications of this? Well, sir, we could be reliving the same day over and over, maybe thousands of times, and we'd never know it. What can we do? Unfortunately, not much. By the next time this loop starts, we won't even remember we had this conversation. It's up to Teal and Colonel O'Neill. Cut to Jack reading Latin for the Novice by Joseph Malozzi. Is, <laughs> is he, uh, forgive me, is he like a writer or a showrunner? Yeah. Or something? Yeah. 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 I know he's involved in the show somehow. Uh, you can tell he's already regretting this decision, but Teal tells him, like, this is the only way we can figure this out. The gate activates again, signaling the loop starting over again. And there's this dialogue between him and it. We don't have to read this through, but like Jack is like, <laughs> the worst part about this is that like every time we loop, Daniel asked me a question and I wasn't mm -hmm. listening the first time. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. It's, it's so awkward to have to deal with. And Teal is like, <laughs> bro, you're not the only one who has to deal with some discomfort. So <laughs> the loop starts again and we're in a corridor uh, Tilk is walking along when an airman opens the door in front of him and hits him in the face. Every <laughs> time. Could you imagine just like oh. waking up immediately the door slam in your face? Because he's like mid stride when he comes back. So even if it was like a step further, Tilk can't even he can't stop. even avoid it. He yeah. had no way. Yeah. Mid stride. So and the airman like apologizes and Teal says the whole I will not be so forgiving next time it should happen. Like, <laughs> like, like you can tell he's so fed up, but then like to the airman, he's like, next time, what does he mean? Like, just, <laughs> oh my god, like what? This is the only time I've done it. Poor thing. So we have a loop montage of Jack and Teal learning the language, getting increasingly bored and frustrated correcting daniel on wording which is kind of funny because it's like hmm, you're so smug and know-it-all well now we know more than you we're correcting you on your own shit mm -hmm. um they start messing around juggling balled up paper to pass the time after a couple of loops they are both very excellent jugglers which i wonder if they had to learn that for this specific scene or if they already knew how to juggle I feel like that'd be a good question, but maybe they like knew how to do it and they're like, ooh, this would be good for us to like throw in. This would be, be fun. Easy. Yeah. Be like, let's write it in. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine. So, yeah. Many, many loops have happened thus far. And we would like to share a clip of yes. one of a really good scene from this episode. All right. Let's do it. Pretty short. Who knew? Should we not be assisting Daniel Jackson with the translation? I'm taking this loop off. <laughs> Don't need to. If we don't find a way out of this soon, I'm going to lose it. Lose it. <laughs> it means go crazy. Nuts. Insane. Bonzo. No longer in possession of one's faculties. Three it. fries short of a happy meal. What? Oh! He said the thing. <laughs> he said the thing. He said yeah. the there thing. Was, there was no way we could have said that ourselves. That had to have been. No. no. We had to play that. And I now also... if there's anyone out there that still didn't know where our podcast name came from. Now you're we're going to have to make a clip of this and post <laughs> for it for all. Yeah, for everything. For Perez specifically. For Perez. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how many takes they had to do of that and how many ketchup and mustard smiley faces he made. I wonder if that was even a part of it or if he's just like ad libbed that. I really wonder. It was really funny. I imagine it was probably different shapes. <laughs> yeah. 
Each one maybe was different. <laughs> maybe he like that. maybe he just spelled like wacko one time. I don't know. It was a really <laughs> fun good. scene. That was fun. Yep. So cut to them once again finishing up. They're, at this point, like Jack and Teal are tag teaming this translation on the chalkboard. Jack's writing They're a bunch so of stuff out. It. He, mm -hmm. He's like, Tilk, and Tilk's up. He's like, put me in, coach, and they pass the chalk, and Tilk takes over. And then we have this next clip, which is mm -hmm. a little bit longer, but this is like the crux of the episode mm -hmm. and kind of like what makes it so funny. Here, here you go, everybody. Don't say we never did nothing for you. <laughs> hey, it's kind of an opportunity. How's that? Well, think about it. I mean, if you know in advance that everything is always going to go back to the way it was, then... You could do anything mm. for as long as you want without having wait, to like, worry about I love consequences. Like, wait, what? Perks up. Yeah. The ideas have begun. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it would have taken two loops with Sam and Daniel. Right? Excuse exactly. me. <laughs> Sam and Daniel. Chalk down. Took his, yeah. like, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> but, like, he's like, no, it's goodbye. He's like, okay, bye. You can tell this was one of his intrusive thoughts that he let go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, sir? sir? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll play. That'll play. <laughs> How far is Alaris, anyway? Several billion miles away. That's gotta be a record. <laughs> I love that they're just, like, in outfit for this. They oh. are, the socks are really... It was a bad shot. It's a bad mm -hmm. shot, Jack. Is but your pottery is getting right better, now? so yeah, I'll it allow is. it. Good old Neil, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> In the middle of my backswing? <laughs> Sorry, sir, I didn't realize Aww. that. <laughs> but that felt good. No. Oh, Everybody shut up. George. Colonel, what are you doing out of uniform? Handing you my resignation. Resigning? What for? So I can do this. The crowd of people. What are you smiling at? Nothing. <laughs> Such a good montage. So mm -hmm. many things. Solid. Like the biking through the corridors i'm like that had to have been some kind of intrusive thought that he had at one point where he's like this would be like really nice to just ride a bike through and he's like what better opportunity than now to let that intrusive thought win just do it the yep. golfing through the gate um chris judge is actually like a really good golfer and he was able to hit it through the gate but uh richard dean anderson was not and they had to cgi that to make it look like it went through it's not um, even that like it. far shanked it, sliced it shanked it i can't remember which direction is which I yeah went to golf camp as a child and that was about it so it doesn't look that hard considering like how big of an opening they have but like i probably couldn't fucking do it so <laughs> <laughs> who am i to talk shit um but yeah this was like super fun and then obviously that kiss like come hmm. on I did it was like, like the he... perfect like dip kiss too. Like that yeah. was like a perfect. And she kissed him back. So in like, the... oh yeah. But Hammond in the background <laughs> gets me every time because he's like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> every single time. I think we've we've covered all of all of the scenes that I included in the thumbnail for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, tried to get all the good the good stuff. I smashed it all into one thumbnail. So, you know what? If we're gonna break it down and be like hardcore shippers, the fact that he retired is perfect because, like, even though nobody would remember it, he had to do it to make it right. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was the only way to make it right and to remove mm -hmm. any ickiness or like whatever. I don't even know the word for it, but like to remove that power dynamic, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. He did that right. He didn't have to because he was the only one who would have remembered it. Teal wasn't there. Teal was probably doing something else. I don't know. But, but he, she and she returned that kiss too. 
Oh, she did. She did. Yes. She was not like, ew, get off me. Blech. No, she was no. like, hmm. she's like, all right, <laughs> well, like, why not? Mm. So great montage, super fun. Love that for us. <laughs> so for those who aren't big shippers, because I even like I'm a neutral shipper on this, I, but I love this ship. Like you cannot deny this. Like the people who deny it, I'm like, they exist. They exist. It, 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 it exists. Yeah. And as I listen, younger me did not would not like hold any space for that argument. But like now I can I can hold some space for it and be like, yeah, like the power dynamic would make it icky, but he never does anything to make it weird or to like i no. don't know encroach on that i think that's the thing though i think there are a lot of uh com person in command subordinate relationships that could be icky mm -hmm. but it's almost like everybody knows including jack and including sam that jack is like in command but it but like jack defers to sam for so much anyway that mm -hmm. like outside of their rank because there has to be like a hierarchy right mm -hmm. they're they're very good both at what they do and that feels more equal footing yes and like th then if like sam was some sort of like private who's just a foot soldier or something and like you know yes. like it just feels like there's that mutual respect there yes. and there's more to it than just oh you're my commanding officer sort of thing Yes, mm -hmm. I do think you're right. And in many ways, he he views her as superior. Like he said, mm -hmm. he's, she's smarter than me. Like I'm a big dummy. So like I, there does it does feel like it balances out because in that way, she's higher ranking than him in mm -hmm. like the science aspect. But then mm -hmm. when it comes to military and leadership, he's technically higher. So it does even at the playing field a little bit. And I do think they view or at least he views her as his equal yeah um which is important I yeah think. outside of the the structure that they have to abide by you know yeah. like yeah that's why it doesn't fit it's ne it never felt icky to me like this yeah. shit never really felt icky to me because he never took advantage and he never correct. he never made it gross yep correct so, there was never like coercion or manipulation or prior like it never felt like yeah and we yeah. all know that does happen in real life like oh God. And not, I'm not even talking so in the military. Much. I'm talking in like so many office places. jobs, yep. like quid pro quo. There's, there's laws against that kind of dynamic, although that mm -hmm. doesn't really stop it from happening. But yeah, yeah. like it still happens. Yep. I mean, so, people fall in love at work and like that happens in those spaces, but military, there are regulations against truly, it. Yeah. Like in other office places, you just get reassigned. You go somewhere different. Like it happens and no shame to that, but you shouldn't lie or be in those power dynamics that cause problems like you need to just transfer <laughs> no yeah that and i'm gonna happen all the time in ems yeah oh by the way the like oh. retail supervisor and oh um, yeah, it's everywhere and that like, was icky like the ones that i knew about when i was at working with ems it was like no yeah oh there's there's so much of it it's inevitable but it's just how you handle it really says a lot about your character mm -hmm. so yeah i'll leave it at i that. was I was more specifically talking about like people who are in positions of power, like in a working setting that oh, take yeah. advantage of it and, oh. and are icky about shit, like oh. manipulate. They do take advantage. They do manipulate and it's barf. There's so there's in particular one manager from a long time ago, not in my current company that I remember, like, again, like younger me is so stupid and naive, but like, I remember like we're closing down the store we're in and, we're like talking and like fitness and doing stuff. And he was like showing me like pictures of like his workouts and like, but it's like a little bit too much body exposed. And then he's like, oh, don't tell anyone I showed you this. But like, I know we like both like fitness or whatever. And so I was like, oh, this is weird. But then like, I was so naive to like the preferential like schedules I started to get and things that happened. But then there was this like, hey, like show me your workout. Like then show me what your stuff is. And I'm like, oh no, I'm not doing that. And then like, I got like, shit shifts after that and I'm like what the fuck was that about mm -hmm. and then you look back on it you're like that's illegal ah, mm -hmm. okay that's what was going on there okay cool so yes yeah so oh. could yeah. never be jack not nope. our man no nope. anyway jack, stellar man on that part yeah yes so they have finally completed the translation after many loops off they're like all right i guess we gotta like get back to 
fixing this shit. Mm-hmm. So we have some dialogue between Daniel and one O'Neill line in there. <clears throat> Just want to right, cool. cool. As I originally suspected, P4X 639 was once a colony of the ancients. They thrived there for thousands of years until they were struck by some sort of unspecified cataclysm. Perhaps a disease, but we'll never really know for sure. In any case, facing certain destruction, they built a time machine. They were going to go back and change their history to avoid their fate. Right, but it didn't work. Instead of sending a team of scientists back to the key moment in their history, the device caused a short-term continuous loop, just like the one we've been experiencing. They experienced the same day dozens, perhaps hundreds of times, trying to get the machine to work, but in the end, they gave up, they shut it down, let the end come. So ultimately, they can break the time loop. Hammond asks this, and Daniel starts to kind of go on a tangent, and Jack is like, yes, it can be broken. So they head back to 639. Jack starts calling out for Malachi right away. Teal heads for the altar and runs into a force shield. Apparently, this is force shield 2.0 that sends you flying backwards <laughs> if you bump into it <laughs> very fucking violently. Because the ones from upgrades, it was like, I mean, yeah, if you ran into it, it's like running into a wall. It was more like a wall function. This is like this launch is like you across the whole <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Launch you across the clearing. <laughs> And it knocks them out. <laughs> so Malachi is not going to let them break the loop. So there's some dialogue. It's Daniel, O'Neill, Malachi, and like one little Carter in there. Um, I can do the O'Neill. I'll do Malachi and the one Carter. And I'll just do Daniel. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Malachi, we have to reset these controls or the loop is going to restart itself again. I'm counting on it. I need more time. Once I've correctly deciphered the symbols on the altar, I will be able to master the time device. Why? So you can be king of Groundhog Day? Do you think I would do this for personal power? She... You wouldn't understand. What happened? She died. Twelve years ago. When I found this place and discovered its true purpose, I dedicated myself to unlock its mysteries. And Carter says, So you could go back and save her? Malachi... No, that would be quite impossible. She died from a congenital heart weakness. Not even the ability to travel time can change that. Then why are you doing this? To be with her once more. Malachi, the device doesn't work. We finished translating the text on these ruins. The ancients who built this place never got it to work. They tried over and over again, just like you. But in the end, they just gave up. Why do you think this place has been deserted for so long? They couldn't save themselves. You're wrong. There must be some other explanation. I can make this work. So this is what his motive was the whole time. His wife died 12 years ago, which is a very long time. He's been dedicating mm-hmm. his life to this ever since. That's some heavy grief. Mm-hmm. And what did he did? He say he didn't hear that it was like some congenital heart defect. So like mm-hmm. going back in time wouldn't be, even be able to save her. It's not like an accident that he could save her from. Um, Mm -hmm. But he could at least be with her again and see her again. And this is like, like a really good villain, so to speak. I wouldn't even call him a villain, but like a good antagonist who's motivated by love and like something that's not stupid, like power. He's like, you think I would do this for power? Like, no, Mm -hmm. I'm not that shallow or like that Mm -hmm. terrible of a person. So, there's this really good dialogue between Malachi and O'Neill, and this is so good. Do you guys want to read this? Mm-hmm. Sure. Do you want to keep with Malachi? Sure. Or do you want O'Neill? It doesn't matter. O'Neill's pretty expressive. I don't know if I can do it as. Expressive. I'll do O'Neill then. I'll do. O'Neill. I'm gonna say I think it needs <clears throat> it needs your expression, your ability to be expressive. <clears throat> The people who made that machine are the same ones who made the Stargates, and they couldn't get the damn thing to work. And even if you could, just for the sake of arguing, you can't change what happened to her. I can touch her face again and talk with her, hear her laugh. Like you remember? Yes. And then what'll happen? She'll die. And then what? You'll start over? Listen to me. I know what it's like. You can't. I lost my son. I know. And as much as I... I could never live that over again. Could you? Malachi mm. says no. This yeah. poor guy, like, I I really feel for him because, like, he's kind of like, it feels, it sounds like he's starting to cry through this. He's like, mm-hmm. she'll die. But mm-hmm. it, 
I don't well, know. It sounds like he has not had a single damn person in his life to support him through his grief. And this yeah. poor fucker has been lost. And I feel for him. That's a yeah. long ass time to be sitting in this space for, and all it took was someone given some tough, true love, but it had to be someone who'd gone through it before. Cause yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. And it makes you wonder, like, is he a native to this planet? Does he live there or did he just find it one day? And like, figure it out like oh this must be what it is i'm gonna stay here now like we don't even know where he's from or anything mm -hmm. like that we don't even know if this planet is inhabited by anyone i get the feeling he's been traveling around looking mm -hmm. for something like this for those 12 years like yeah ever since she died yeah Probably. i don't think I, I don't feel like he is native there because he is trying to learn it or figure it out it seems super boring to him yeah um but anyway yeah so but it's i don't know it's really sad i felt bad for him Mm -hmm. So Malachi turns the machine off. He deactivates the force shield and O'Neill approaches. He takes the photo of his wife from the bag and hands it to him. And like mm -hmm. he opens it. It's kind of like a lot, like a living picture, yeah. kind of like mm -hmm. Harry Potter or whatever. It's a live photo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a live photo. True. Yeah. They predicted live photos, but <laughs> mm -hmm. he opens it up and like, she like turns and looks and smiles. And that's kind of like what the picture is. Hmm. So, cut to SG-1 returning to Earth. They did it. They broke the time loop. They're like, woohoo. And Jack is like, you know what they say. Just try, 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 try again. <laughs> um, so then we're back in the commissary. Jack is horking down some oatmeal. They had to make it oatmeal, too, which is, like, kind of gross. Like, the only thing grosser would be, like, shredded wheat or bran flakes or something. Like, really <laughs> unappealing and bland, but he's super happy to be eating anything but fruit. Literally every time mm -hmm. I eat oatmeal, I think about <laughs> the way Jack O'Neill eats oatmeal in this episode. It's just like, oh. <laughs> I love oatmeal. Y'all can. No, it's good. I love it. I love it. But yeah. like, oh, okay. I was just like, scoop into it. I think about like, like a big old. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like very plain oatmeal too. Like give me some brown sugar and maple in that. And that's, that's oh, good. Yeah. But agreed. Topic for another day, though. <laughs> yeah. So Sam tells them the Tokra were trying to contact them for three months, but oh, who knows how long they'd been stuck in there before then. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was like what the Tokra needed. They were like, oh, damn, they must be mad at us. They're not calling us back or whatever. They're ignoring us. Yeah. And then Daniel poses the question to Jack that you could do anything you want without worrying about the consequences. Like, were you ever tempted? Mm hmm. So we have this last kind of bit of dialogue between the two. You guys want to read that? Sure. Yep. You know, it's funny. You asked me that before. And? And he just looks at Sam with a <laughs> smile on his face. And they, Sam and Daniel are confused and puzzled. And he just takes another big fat bite of that oatmeal. Fade out. So that's our episode. Yep. Uh, I love this episode. You guys want to look at the comments? See what Ooh, kind yeah. of comments we have going on? I have starred quite a few. Um, I see this. Let's see. We've got Mara here first. I think seeing the character go on a personal journey resonated with people wanting to self-reflect themselves if they had the chance to not have time uh, be an obstacle is why people love Groundhog Day episodes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I like that perspective that time that's going to that kind of like leads into, yeah, yeah. We'll come back to that. We'll come back. Yeah, yeah. we'll go through some yeah, more yeah. comments first. Um, I just I I started this because everybody in the comments were like reenacting the episode along with us. <laughs> so I loved it. Like it, the whole Absolutely script is in the comments as well. Um, perfect. Yes. Uh, snarky Daniel, best Daniel. I think. This is, oh. Yeah, he was good in this oh, episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we love bratty, snarky Daniel. Um, and, you know, I mentioned the post-ascension Daniel, and Mara said, post-ascension Daniel seems <laughs> Agreed. He's evolved. Um, let's see. There is a lot of bad examples. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of bad examples. Just look uh, at the face of a crazy man. <laughs> bad example. Chris Judge does such a good job at stoic, yet somehow expressive. He yes. really does. Mm -hmm. He works that jaw muscle. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. He's always, like, clenching. You can see it. He must, like, chew 10 packs of gums a day to keep, like, his jaw <laughs> muscles. He's just oh, yeah. chewing that. 
that <laughs> juicy Cut fruit. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, that's the name of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, what a surprise. Thanks. It should be no shocker to anyone from this point forward. Um, and I starred two comments that um you will appreciate, Sarah, and oh. you will make you laugh because I starred them. Oh, First wow. is from Casually Sandra. I will also say that this is my favorite Sam hairstyle. Thank you, girl. Yes. And then from Jet, Sam looks too good with that hair. I, I love like it. it too. I love it. Because, like, like how many more episodes still beneath the surface? <laughs> too many. Too many. No, I'm with it. you. I do, I do love the hair. My too. girl needs that haircut. It's also out of regs big time. I know. <laughs> I know. The rules. Boo. The rules are getting in the way of two things that I really like. Sam and Jack and that haircut. I what hate the, the haircut so much. Boo, tomato. It's not even a haircut. It's just grown out. I hate it. Yeah. It's just grown out. Yeah. Yeah. So she's so, she deserves some space with her hair. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. You'll get like what how do you feel about the later seasons hair? Like in seven and eight when it's kind of grown out more? Uh eight has it's cooler looking the way it's grown out when it when you get towards like the end of seven or and eight. Like mm -hmm. yeah, when like she and Teal'c are go into the Asgard and all that, mm -hmm. like that's cooler looking the way it's grown out that way. But yeah. uh I'm I'm not huge on nine and ten's hair either, honestly. Yeah. I like the very short and I like the ponytail look from like the movies and and um you know Atlantis and everything. I don't like yeah. the in-between. It's not practical to me. <laughs> That's true. Because like I that would probably drive me crazy too. You can't tie it back or really do anything with it. It's yeah. that awkward middle stage. Um, Jet's asking, why do I hate it? Why do I hate it? Because I actually love that Sam is allowed to be a short-haired female mm -hmm. person who is sexy and doesn't need the long hair to be that way. And it's Correct. like, especially at that time on television, you just didn't get to see it. So um, that's that's really why I hate that they like, when they, when they try to head that direction with her hair, I, I don't like it because it doesn't, you know, we all like to see ourselves on television and everything, too. So, mm -hmm. like, um, it just, to me, it's just, it was more groundbreaking in more than one way. Because, yes, they were paying attention to the regs. And also, they were allowing a woman to have short hair and still be sexy and awesome mm -hmm. and everything with the short hair. That is and so I cool. think Amanda looks great with short hair. Yeah, like, yeah she does. Not, like, let's be real, too. Her face so. card never declines. No. She's, <laughs> yeah. You gotta have face to pull that off. Yeah. So, so. I guess it's not that I think the hairstyle is ugly. I, that's not really where it is. It's the, it's like the implication of the growing out of the hair that is what I don't like about the hair. Well, and just like the representation to your point of, mm -hmm. you know, showing that short hair can be sexy. And, yeah. you know, and there's can a lot of feminine can be very yeah. feminine. like, you know, yeah. it, you don't it, it, hair length doesn't equal long hair can be masculine. It does like it's like it doesn't matter. So I think that's what, right. what's really important to me. So this reminds me of a TikTok that I saw recently. It was about online dating, the horror, you know, Um <laughs> But it was uh -huh. somebody like matched with someone. They went on a date with a man. And when they showed up, the man had like mid length back hair, like not back hair on his back, but like, <laughs> good God. What, 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 like, what are we? That's not what I meant. But like his hair was like really long and went like down his back, mm -hmm. where in the photos, oh, yeah. he had short hair. So yeah. like she was kind of like kind of turned off by that. And then like she was getting kind of shit in the comments from dudes like what do you mean cheap things change blah 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 and it's like okay but that picture was very clearly old and a misrepresentation of what he looked like right now and in the comment section because i always read the comments somebody said like you can't tell me if you match with a girl on a dating app with really mm -hmm. long hair and she showed up with a pixie cut you wouldn't feel some way about it because believe unfortunately dudes mm. have a real preference when it comes to hair and what it looks like and like who knows right now like i don't think adam would care but i'm just saying like some people especially some women will refuse to cut their hair because my husband likes it long so yeah. like i as much as i do like this hair 
you are totally right, Rebecca, that short hair on women and seeing that representation totally matters. And I hope someone takes a picture of Sam from season six to their barbershop and is like, give me the Sam Carter. Thank I've you. done that. I've done that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, most of, except for this mullet that I've got going on right now, most of my haircuts involve some sort of picture of Sam Carter into my hair guy. Like, yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, as someone who has had every length of pixie to long to like platinum blonde brown, this conversation around hair preference is so appropriate. But I do think it goes across the gender spectrum. Mm -hmm. I think both sides have that. So like yeah. just not to like call. It. But to your point, um, so I think that if you are someone who embraces change through your hairstyle, I do think it's appropriate. Or not appropriate, but I think it's nice to like show that expression or kind of like that's something that is part of you some people keep the same hairstyle forever so like there's there's difference like there's people who stay there and there's people who change it constantly and so if someone gets attached to that image and then it's gone i just think that maybe they're not the right person for you like if you're struggling with that kind of stark transition because i remember like in college i had platinum blonde hair for a really long time and i was like no nah, i'm gonna go back to my natural brow and the circle of people that I hung out with, the group of men in that circle, every single one of them said, what did you do? Why would you do that? From going to from blonde to brunette? Mm -hmm. Because it was like short and it was still like pixie and like they're like, oh, that's they, a bad it's decision. Like, and I was like, oh, who the fuck cares? stop and not they, your they hair buddy well, like not your hair but it was so jarring to me because i had never because i was blonde and had that like pretty privilege with the hair and it like looked good and all that so to take that away i i never understood how much people cared about hair until i changed it and they're like oh that was a terrible decision that was that was i don't like that <laughs> And they were so fucking vocal about it. And so mm. from that point on, I that's why I'm like, I'm always going to just fucking change my hair whenever I want, no matter what. It can be pink. It can be purple. It can be short. It can be long. I don't give a fuck. They it's like, like they were personally offended by what oh, they decided to they do. Sat me down. They sat me down and said that I literally ruined my aesthetic. I was like, the f you're what? And you know what else is a very uh, interesting journey? that I know you've talked about is letting your gray come out and owning that. Like uh -huh. that's like people, especially like women and femme presenting people, there is never mm -hmm. a shortage of someone commenting on your appearance and your oh, hair yeah. is like a whole thing. I have heard so many stories from women talking about the different experiences mm -hmm. they've had when they went from brunette to blonde to red and mm -hmm. like how men treated them, all of those different. And then, that's not even bringing in the length into factor. And then like, mm -hmm. if you are a natural redhead, I have a real complex about this shit because every hairdresser I went to, random mm -hmm. family members, people on the, oh my God, never dye your hair. It's beautiful. People pay so much money to have that. You're so lucky, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. So now like it instilled in me, oh my God, like I'm so scared to do anything to my hair mm -hmm. except maybe mm -hmm. get blonde highlights. Like that's the most that I'll do because- that's what makes me special, blah, 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 like that kind of thing. So like, it's crazy how much something like hair affects us. Yeah. And how people, and then this is another thing. Thank God for TikTok because it's truly like helping me unlearn so much shit. All of the oh, yeah. shit that we see haircuts to flatter your face shape. Don't get these bangs, get those bangs. When have you ever seen an article about haircuts to flatter men's faces? Never, never. never. It's always like, and now I will say barber technology and barbers in general have really become super advanced and stuff. And they're like, let me elevate your look. I want to do like something that fits you. So they are incorporating that more. And you will see that like they do elevate, mm -hmm. like they'll take someone who's been like, I don't really know what I'm doing with my hair. And they're like, let me help you. But like, I've never seen a magazine article in like whatever men's health get this haircut to flatter your face shit no but that shit is rampant when it when it's in like women's spaces don't get these bangs if you have a square face like can mm -hmm. i just have whatever fucking hair i want yeah like, i that i don't i've never thought that those rules were across the board anyway i feel like mm. 
you you that's why it's really cool to experiment with your hair so you know like mm -hmm. oh this this is really does look good on me to me i like yeah. this you know yeah like, yep yeah oh yeah and it's all about preference. And yeah, as soon as I went super short, I never went back because I was like, this is good for me. <laughs> this is right for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, anyway, I think it's a right. tangent about hair. Um, but it's it needed to happen. Before. It did need to happen. <laughs> it needed to happen. Because I joke about not liking Sam's hair in this era. But there is a reason. I think there's a very good and real reason why I have problems with it. You're totally right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. Everything that it represents because again time frame that that this is taking place in like we need to have a hot lady on the show blah and then it's like yeah so yeah. i agree okay um, but can we to be mindful of, of time and time but can we talk through the whole grief and laughter that whole kind of like conversation yes and like that undertone can we take yeah. a moment to go through that um especially because of that audio articles that really talked about like jack's positioning in that at the end yeah. um but i don't know if y'all have any specific thoughts before i just say my thoughts go, go Sarah, for you it. Quite a bit. i have other thoughts about like the the concept of time loop episodes and why they appeal to us so i'll, okay, I'll cool. go after you want to okay cool lead on this one yeah and i think it's more just of a food for thought not necessarily like an opinion that i have because it's going into this episode um, until I listened to this article that I listened to the afternoon, which again, this afternoon, which is again, the companion article. And it, what was the title of it again? It was Jack O'Neill's lessons of living and living with loss. Is that the one? Yes. yes. That one. Yeah. So that, those are, I mean, not to toot our own horn, but like, those, I think those audios are audio articles are pretty darn I good. Need, I think everyone should go listen to that article because as I was walking literally an hour and a half before this episode. So I haven't had time to digest it. So this is going to just be planting the seed for others to kind of sit with or go listen to that article is this episode for all the other reasons, but particularly in Jack's growth as a vulnerable character, an authentic, genuine, well-rounded individual. This episode is extremely important from his grief and ability to step another rung on the ladder, as so to speak, on the grief space. Because that article talked about, you know, his undertone, this whole kind of core of who he is, is this this loss of his son and his inability. He didn't talk about it for a while. You know, it wasn't that. Then like so we go through episodes that show first he like kind of opened up like his parenthood, you know, through different interactions with different children. I won't break that all down. You can go listen to the article, please do. But what I found fascinating is that in our stages of grief, we eventually come to this place of, of self-awareness and we become this educator, be become this healer, we become this safe haven for others. And that's a really important step for a lot of people when they can step outside their grief because you see Malachi, who's so stuck in the infancy of it, who's stuck in this desperation, almost of like, where Jack O'Neill was when he was going to Abydos to just like end it all, right? There's like, he couldn't see beyond it. And you have that juxtaposed with Jack, who was at this like kind of end stage of this group. He, he's accepted that fate and he was able to take someone and look at Malachi and keep it so simple to him and understand that the, what he needed to hear was the hardest, most basic truth is, do you want to live that again? Because I don't. You know, I would never. And he could get through to him because he's gone through all those stages of grief because he was so educated on like what mattered in that grief was. It's not about Jack feeling bad. It's not about focusing on like, oh, Malachi, like you couldn't have done anything. There was no like wallowing with him. It was. I don't want to live through that again. And I don't think you do either. And I it just I think people I'd like for people to think about that, because this for Jack's character from here on out very much is a uh, educator on grief or a really good person to help people kind of get themselves out of it as we continue on the series. So I've tried to like think about other episodes where I see that happen, but he is never like the lovey dovey about it, but he definitely sees grief in people and takes a step approach to be the one to help pull them out of it. So all the other things that I, ne I never thought about that until I listened to that um, article. So that's kind of gotten my wheels spinning because I see it so clearly how all these other things happen. But the minute he saw Malachi in grief, 
he knew exactly what to do. It was like a crisis response to that. He knew exactly what to do to help him de-escalate. And I thought yeah. that was pretty cool to see. So anyway, that's, that's, we can stop that, but that's a, just, it was a really cool, powerful. So that article by George was, was really great. Yeah. Lawrence reads it too, who Lawrence has a very nice speaking voice. So it's a nice, easy listen. Uh, but you should check out those audio articles on the companion. They're on Spotify. So there's a couple different ones. Mm -hmm. uh, Rebecca does some too, who also has a very nice speaking voice. We, we yes, split they it up do. depending on who the author is. Um, yeah. In fact, we changed our reader for the Matrix one that we did, um, and because Lawrence started reading it, and but it was it was written by a, a trans woman about transgender issues. Mm. So um, we decided I would read it instead, and I thought that was mm. really cool for us to even take that into account and take the author Absolutely. into account and really like decide who should be reading that. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. So okay. I'm pretty oh, proud of those. One. We we did two runs of them, two two yeah. different like runs of them, and then we didn't do any more. But um, they're there for people to listen to. So yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Very good. Okay, so um, that was my time. Now to you. So kind of piggybacking off of kind of what we said at the beginning about like why do we like time travel episodes or like time loop episodes and movies and stuff so much? Because like. I don't like certain, you know, you've Groundhog's Day, Back to the Future is like such a fun. I love that trilogy. It's super, super, super fun. But like, why is this so interesting to us? Especially when it's like time loops, how repetitive it is. And it opens up that question that Daniel posed of like, you can do anything you want and not have to worry about repercussions, which is its own thing. But I think it's because time is a non-renewable resource. And Mara said something in the comments that kind of like mm -hmm. alluded. Can you bring that up again? Yep. Hold on. Da, da, da. Reflect themselves if they had the chance to not have the time be an obstacle. So I don't really view time as an obstacle per se, but like a resource. And with time is like a non-renewable resource. You can't buy more of it. You can be mm -hmm. Daddy Bezos or, you know, <laughs> Oprah Winfrey, mm -hmm. you can't buy more time. Now, no. you can argue I can pay people to do stuff with their time so I don't have to do it, which is a whole other topic that I don't want to get into. But you yourself cannot buy more time. Once it is gone, it is gone. And mm -hmm. the opportunity to have more time, to essentially buy more time or have an unlimited amount of time and not have to worry about what it's going to. I think that's what it comes down to because it doesn't matter if you're the richest person in the world or somebody who has no means and no accessibility, they all have time and nobody can buy more of it. You can't trade it. You can't nothing. Like once it's gone, it's gone. So I think that's what it comes down to is like as as somebody who uh, ha has had anxiety for as long as I can remember, mm -hmm. I think it, there's also something to be said about um, there are so many times where you make a decision or you do something and you you wish you could change it or you wish you could go back or you mm -hmm. wish you could figure out how to get it right. And like, oh, I said that thing way too quickly and I wish I could take it back and, you know, mm -hmm. all of that. So there's you know, when you're a kid and you, you, your teachers and everybody like do over, let's do a do over. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. like when you become an adult and you're stuck in adult situations and you wish you had that do over. Totally. Um, I think that's a, a big, that too. Yeah. The big issue. 100%. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Getting well, like, chance. well, to RT rabbit. So there's two comments there. So Thomas says like, I think it's because regret is a powerful enough emotion that it can change you foundationally because the chance to test the elimination of that regret can be extremely enthralling. Like if you can look at something and go, Hey, within this free time, maybe I can address that, that moment that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to. I think that's pretty powerful. Yeah. And I think as I get older, some, something I'm very, aware of is protecting my time and energy so like when we first started this podcast i was in a completely different job that was extremely mm -hmm. stressful it took up a lot of my time having to work crazy hours and it got to the point where it was like this isn't about money anymore they can throw a million mm -hmm. not a million but they could throw 
a million. I do have a million. They can throw a million. But like, it didn't matter how much money they could actually throw at me, like in a realistic setting. You could not pay me enough. I was over it to the point of like, my time and my energy is worth more than this. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I'd be like, I'm making money. I don't care. Blah, blah, blah. Like, whatever. But it, as I got older, I'm like, my time is too precious for this. Mm -hmm. My energy is too precious. My mental health. And there's mm -hmm. even certain things where it's like, I will find myself, my internet router. I have Comcast. And I paid for the little rental router. And Adam's like, I can just use one. Like, we can buy one. That way you don't have to pay 15 extra dollars. I was like, I will pay 15 extra dollars. So I don't have to do that. I don't want to mm -hmm. do that. I will pay for the convenience of it. And then eventually I'm like, if you want to do it, you do it. I don't want to have to do it, go through the whole process of resetting it and setting it up and logging into all of my devices. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. So like it's stuff like that where if I can make the choice to pay a little extra more money, which I know is a more privileged take that some people can't afford. But in certain mm -hmm. aspects, it's like I will pay for someone to do something for me so I don't have to because it's mm -hmm. my time that I don't want to spend. Yep. So yeah, that's, that's how I looked at it. It's like now all of a sudden Jack and Teal have this endless amount of time that they never had before. How are they going to spend it? Okay, but I do have I have one frustration with that though. We see what Jack does with his time. We not don't really see Teal. No, we don't really. see any of Teal's interest. We don't know what Teal does other than show him slam the guy in the closet and show like and finally like act on that frustration and, play and golf. that bothers and me that was golf. yeah that bothers me that's the only thing we see about what tilk does during that time and that frustrates me because yeah. we, definitely, we see we see jack like riding a bike and learning languages and doing pottery and doing exploratory things and then we don't see a yeah thing in a positive light during that time and the playing golf is with jack it's not tilk on his own yeah we what don't do singularly think? see what tilk chooses to do yep so i say that is leave your ideas in the comments let yep. us know what you think tilk was doing mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i don't know eating yeah pie that's ergo never mind i don't know <laughs> no like i like what what was he doing learning stuff he obviously has like a we learn later he's enamored with like media and like watching movies also, like and he also immediately as soon as as soon as uh daniel's like you guys yeah. can't be doing anything he's like bye like <laughs> he, yeah, he's, but he's all he's doing something yeah yeah, but like it fucking sucks because in representation, when we truly like the nuance of it, like as much as I hate, like you don't show, you show what the white man does during his time. And I, and I get that it's kind of like meant to be a shippy episode and follow up, but like we don't, we don't see what Teal, the man of color, does. So we don't, the, and the only, the only shippy part is the kiss though. So it's really yeah. not a shippy episode. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's looks and stuff, but there's, it's not like Divide and Conquer is way more of a shippy episode than this yeah. is. Yeah. So like I just I, I think I have to just go on the record with that frustration that like there that's not lost on me that we because I, I mean I love this episode but I also that is a, a big pain point for me that we don't get to see that. I would have liked to see Teal do some goofy silly shit. Mm -hmm. I know yeah. he has venom. I want to see him be silly and goofy. Because yeah. you know he does. He's like I've heard I've heard of a place where humans do battle <laughs> in a pool of jello. Yeah. Like yeah. like yeah. He he's Something. interested in weird, silly shit. So <laughs> yeah, I just I would have liked to have seen it. I think that would have done great things for just balancing what we see on the screen. Yeah. So silly, goofy teal outtakes, mm -hmm. please. All right. I think that's who's it. Close, who's close? Not me. Well. Not me, Rebecca. God damn it. Um. How do I close this? Oh my god. Well, we will be taking the next few loops off. Oh yeah. That's a good point. Mm. We, we will be taking at least one loop off. We may get one in before we also take another loop off. 
Maybe because I'm traveling for work. Right. So everybody out there, we may try to get another one in before Basingstoke, but I'm not sure if we will. Uh, But this is a good one to kind of take some loops off. Take some loops off. Yes. Um, Well, all right. So in in that case, then I am totally taking this loop off. We're done. Get out of here. Taking the loop off, and we're closing the iris. (laughs) 